Let's turn over to John chapter 21 this evening. John chapter 21, right here at the very end of Jesus' ministry. Actually, he had already given his life and rose again, but um, this is that latter part, just uh, the little tidbit we have on Jesus' interaction with Peter after his denial. And uh, I want to share a few thoughts with you, not necessarily his denial or what Jesus was saying to him. Well, I, partly, I guess, what he said to him, but as it related to John. And this is a, a different sort of message. I hope, oh, I hope that you'll take it uh, in, in a good spirit. It's, it's probably a, a little bit of a challenging uh, thought in some ways, and I don't mean it to be um, unkind. But John 21 and verse number 15 and I'm going to talk to you tonight, uh, this is where part of it might be dangerous, but I'm going to talk to you about a Facebook mentality, a Facebook mentality. John chapter 21, and verse number 15. <clears throat> so when they had dined, Jesus saith to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He saith unto him, yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, feed my lambs. He saith to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my sheep. He saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him, The third time lovest thou me. And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus saith unto him, Feed my sheep. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, When thou wast young, thou girdest thyself, and walkest whither thou wouldest, but when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and another shall gird thee, and carry thee whither thou wouldest not. This spake he signifying by what death he should glorify God, which would be crucifixion. And when he had spoken this, he saith unto him, Follow me. Then Peter, turning about, seeth the disciple whom Jesus loved following, which also leaned on his breast at supper, and said, Lord, which is, which is he that betrayeth thee? Okay, so this is the one we're talking about, which is John himself. Peter, seeing him, saith to Jesus, Lord, and what shall this man do? Jesus saith unto him, If I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. Then went this saying abroad among the brethren that that disciple should not die. That'd be, again, that'd be John. Yet Jesus said, said not unto him, he shall not die, but if I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? So that little interaction right there at the very end is one that stuck out to me. I was reading through this passage just this past week, and it stuck out to me a little bit. And I want to just talk about a little bit here. I've called it the face, uh, a Facebook mentality, but I want us to recognize how important it is for us to have an individual walk with God. How important it is for us to worry about our own issues what is God speaking to me about? And not necessarily, what about everybody else? What about all the other ones that maybe are in my circle of friends or, or those that I care about, maybe their, their opinion even? But instead, Lord, it's just me, you and me and help me to have that proper mindset tonight. And so uh, let's, let's look at that for a, a little bit here. Some of you may have been in bigger services, uh, you know, camp meeting or uh, this place or that place, and, and sometimes there may be the, the idea, which you've heard probably this uh, kind of a way of putting it before, of uh, carrying a, a rake to church instead of a shovel or pitchfork, and the idea is rather than shoveling the truth over our shoulder, we need to be gleaning and gathering to us all that we can, and so maybe even in a, in a large camp meeting or wherever else, and and uh, you may have heard the message, and maybe there's a little twinge on the inside, but you sort of feel that, that uh, concern about so-and-so over there. Maybe you saw them nearby, and, and so you, you, uh, you know, you're invited to stand to your feet, and, and the way they often may put it, you know, uh, everybody is, you know, stand and bow your heads and close your eyes. Nobody looking around. And yet sometimes there might be that temptation, well, I want to just peek and see if they're minding God. Now, Lord, please deal with them. Help them. Well, there's nothing wrong with asking God to help some other people except when we're supposed to be the one being dealt with. 
We talked about that a little bit this morning as far as it relates to God's Word. But sometimes we, we're so concerned about, well, Lord, please make sure they got that. I, I want them to hear that point. And maybe I want to peek a little bit and see if they might have moved forward at the altar call. Well, maybe that's not you, but maybe sometimes we have that mentality. I've called it a Facebook mentality, and it's sort of the idea of always concerned about what other people, what they have going on in their lives, or what they think, or do I have enough likes, and all of those things that sometimes maybe we miss what God's trying to do in our own lives. Now, these last, uh, really, last few chapters maybe here of the Gospels are not especially favorable to Peter. Because you have the denial and, and you know, running away and all those things. And so maybe we would kind of look at the, the situation there and, and we think, wow, Peter, you're really, you have some problems. But then, thankfully, we have this passage right here in, in chapter 21 where John kind of lets us in on the secret. Maybe there's a little bit here we could say about John because he's following along too. This was supposed to be between Jesus and Peter. But John's following along, and I am glad at least that he could tell us that Jesus dealt with Peter specifically and individually, and, and uh, Peter was responding, and, and Jesus was, you might say, welcoming him back into the fold. And so I am glad for that in a way, except that maybe it wasn't John's business in this case either. I, I don't want to go too far here, because maybe that was God's plan just so we would know there was restoration for Peter. But, of course, Peter had denied three times. He was quizzed three times. We could, could hear many sermons on those issues. But that's not really our theme this evening. When I was reading this, I was drawn especially to these latter verses. And I think really what, what stuck out to me especially was when John sort of indicated, Jesus wasn't saying that I wasn't going to die. He was just saying, it's not really your business. What, what is that to thee? That's, that's, not, that's not your call. That's not anything you need to be worried about. It's not up to you. So John apparently was nearby. As I mentioned, he's following after. But Jesus wasn't dealing with what John was going to deal with, or what, you know, what he was going to face. That's, that's what, not the conversation. That's not what we're, what we're all about here right now. Jesus was focused on Peter. And to be honest with you, the words were not very comforting. I, I, maybe that's one reason why Peter kind of wanted to change the subject a little bit. For Peter to follow Jesus, it was going to mean a cross. It wasn't an easy message. It wasn't something that he would just be overjoyed about. Oh, wow, thank you, Lord, for getting me back in the fold, and I, I'll do anything you want. Well, that's about what it's going to cost him. And traditionally says he was crucified upside down. But um, it wasn't an easy thing to face, and so it was easier for him to say, well, Lord, what about John? Could we talk about his future too? I mean, if it's going to be bad for me, what about him? You know, we've known he's been sort of the beloved one, but, but will he have to suffer too? But that really wasn't, that wasn't the issue right here. Jesus was just dealing with Peter. And it really wasn't his business what was going to happen to any of the others. Now, you know, obviously, Peter may not have had social media, but his attempt to sort of soothe his own bad news by focusing on John's situation instead is pretty common. And sometimes we may, uh, well, kind of struggle a little bit here. Now, please understand, I am not preaching against social media, but I am preaching this issue that sometimes we get focused on the wrong thing instead of focusing on what Jesus is speaking to us about, what the Holy Spirit is dealing with us about. And really, if social media does become a distraction from what God is speaking to us about, and well, what about so-and-so? What, what about what they're going to deal with? And you, know, you haven't dealt with them about that situation or that, that issue in their lives. And we can go running wild about what it means for everybody else. But God wants to speak to us individually. And so if our idea maybe even sometimes our obsession with social media gets us always focused on other people instead of ourselves. Or always, maybe another aspect of that is always trying to put forth the wrong impression about ourselves because we want everybody else to like us. We want everybody to think my life's great. And then maybe we need to back away and say, Lord, just help it to be about you and me. 
Help me to cultivate my relationship with God and not just worried about what everybody thinks about me or what everybody else has to do or how they have to mind God or what that will mean for them. So here this evening, I want to just talk to you about several things that we, we need to be careful we don't obsess over or we don't focus on to our detriment. And the first one I want to notice with you is that we can't obsess about other people's restraints or, or the boundaries that God gives them. You know, sometimes we can have that idea in mind and, and we, we kind of, you know, we think that, or at least it seems like we maybe think that, uh, I know that's not literal, but it's almost like God uses a cookie cutter in our minds to make us all exactly the same and, and uh, whatever he desires, it's going to be bloop, 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 you know, we're cookie cutter. We all come out the same. We all... We all look and act and talk the same and everything. Well, you know, there should be some. We should be like Jesus, but God has, has some different boundaries for different people based on who they are and what they are. Our situation, our own personal situation, is unique to me, to you. We each one have our own way that God needs to deal with us, and God knows what requirements are best for us. He knows what restraints we need personally. He knows the danger areas. He knows if you get over on this course right here, it's going to be a slippery slope for you. Now, so-and-so, whoever it may be, you can call your name maybe, but they may not have that problem. And so I have a boundary over there for them. It's different than you. You don't have to worry about that boundary. This is your boundary right here. You see, sometimes God has some specific issues in our lives, and we may look at different ones, and we think, well, now, Lord, what about them? Don't worry about them. Your boundary is not their boundary. And their boundary is not your boundary. But God gives us restraints for our own good as he knows we've been made up. When we begin to focus on what God asks of others, sometimes we can lose sight of what it means for me to please God. What he's asking of me. And again, sometimes it can, it can get us off track because we start getting in Peter's mindset. Well, what about them? If my life's like this, or if my end is going to be like this, what about them? What, what about so-and-so? What about John in this case? Is he going to have to do the same thing? Jesus, in a sense, might say, Peter, that's, that's not your problem. You need to focus on you. You need to focus on what God's asking of you. Don't worry about his restraint. Don't worry about what I'm requiring of him. Don't obsess over someone else's restraints or boundaries. Each of us, and I don't know if I should say it this way exactly, but each of us has a cross to bear. We have our own cross to bear. I don't want you to get too bogged down in, you know, oh, it's not an easy road, and oh, we, we have this, these terrible crosses we have to carry. I don't mean it that way. I don't want us to have that mind, mindset here, but, but each of us does have our own cross to bear. Every, God calls us each one individually. We have our own issues. And some of us may be here, we may be there, we may be dealing with this person or that person, and God knows exactly what we're, what we're facing. He knows all about our individual struggles. And so he knows the restraints to put on us. He knows about our personal weaknesses. But you know what? i got to worry about mine. To some extent, a lesser extent, but somewhat, maybe I need to deal with my family's weaknesses as well, try to set the right guidelines as the... the head of the home, the father, husband and all. But basically, my issue is not about everybody else's weakness, but about mine, about those boundaries that I need. And if I start saying, well, Lord, I don't think I should have to do this because they don't. That's not what you're, you didn't ask them to do that. God help us not to obsess over the various boundaries, the restraints that God puts on different people. Sometimes people can get so bent out of shape over the individual restraints that it becomes the blanket belief all across the board. Everybody has to do that. But sometimes it might be coming right back here to what Jesus said to Peter. What is that to thee? You don't need to share that with everybody else. It may not be that that God requires that of everybody else. And so you don't have to testify and tell everybody how God has put his finger on a particular area of your life 
as though to put them in bondage. Well, if I have to do it, you have to do it. No, that's not what the Bible says. And there are some things that we might just say, well, what is that to thee? That is not really, that's not up to you. It's not, it's not your business. I know that can sound a little harsh, and I don't mean that in a rude way, but I'm just saying sometimes we have to be careful. When God speaks to us about certain issues, we just let it there. All right, Lord, if, if that's what you want of me, that's fine. It's between you and me. So don't obsess about their restraints, but also don't obsess about their rewards. Their rewards, you know, there's various areas this can come through, and, and whether it's as a pastor, sometimes, well, you know, Lord, if you would just... You know, you would bless my church like you bless his church, then I could be, you know, important and, and, well, that gets a little foolish anyway. But just the point is we can compare ourselves with each other and, well, they got to be up on the platform or they got to be able to, to give the message at such a, you know, grand event or, or they got to, again, the question is, what is that to thee? I didn't ask you to do those things. I didn't put you in that place. That may not be your gift. In this case, it seems to be the issue of, well, Peter's wondering, if I had to die on a cross, well, what about John? And, and the disciples, the other disciples, had the idea from what was said. They thought, well, I guess he's not going to die. Wow, <laughs> isn't he special? He gets out of persecution. Now, again, this is tradition. We don't know for sure, but it sounds as though all the other disciples except John actually died a martyr's death. I can't. Prove that necessarily. The different ones have tried to study into it. And, you know, this one was a missionary to there, and this one went over here. They have even kind of laid out as to how they think they died. Various, I think there were various different ways. John, on the other hand, he ends up being exiled to the Isle of Patmos, but he apparently died a natural death. And so some might look on, even after the fact, they might look on the story and they say, wow, <laughs> pretty good for John. He, no, he's the beloved one. He's the one that stayed right close to Jesus. Jesus sure took care of him. He didn't even have to be persecuted. Well, don't forget the Isle of Patmos wasn't a walk in the park, although thankfully we have the book of Revelation from it. But they could look on him and say, ah, oh, he's not going to die. And then John tries to explain a little bit. He says, that's not what Jesus said. Jesus didn't say I wasn't going to have to die. Or... If, I don't know that he was thinking of it that way at the time. This was a while before this came out, uh, what his end would be. But, you know, maybe he's even saying, it doesn't even say I'm not going to be persecuted. It just said, what is that to thee? That's not your question. That's not for you to answer. Don't worry about the so-called rewards. Sometimes maybe we need to be thinking about this a little bit. The grass can sometimes seem greener on the other side of the fence, can't it? And we think, well, if we just had it like they had it, if we could just be in their situation, if we just didn't have to deal with this problem, wow, we would really be set. I mean, look at them. It's no wonder they're out there in the forefront. It's no wonder that uh, their name is well known. Well, just look at what God... What is that to thee? It's not that important. And even sometimes when we feel that way about our own little church, well, Lord, if you, if you just gave us a pile of money, we would sure know how to use it. We would really make, make your kingdom grow. Boy, wouldn't it be nice to be able to have what some of these other churches... What is that to thee? Don't worry about the other so-called rewards that some other churches have or other individuals have. If we were to look at it pretty honestly, probably we'd be able to find some green grass on our own side of the fence too. You've seen the crazy picture sometimes, a, a horse or whatever, maybe a goat, but they'll, they'll twist their neck all around the fence post to come back in, and they're eating grass right next to their feet if they would just recognize it. It's silly for us to get in our mind this Facebook mentality that compares what I have with what that person has. Well, how, how are things going for me? And, and you always want to put you know, a good light on it, and you're always wondering about, oh, I wonder, wonder how many they had in their special event, and, and oh, I wonder, I wonder how many souls they've seen saved. There is a part of that probably is, is profitable in, in a somewhat of a way, maybe a small way, to say, well, I, I need to be doing my faithful duty. Uh, they're, they're seeing things accomplished. I better be doing my part. 
maybe there's a good part there, but basically speaking, this Facebook mentality that's always comparing amongst themselves and, and what about them and what about this and, and oh, my, mine doesn't look so good. I better, I better get at it. Some of that can really be a bondage that God didn't intend. And we ought to go back to the question he said to Peter, what is that to thee? Your issue is between you and God. Are you being faithful? Are you going to follow? Uh, the end of verse 30, uh, 22. If I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? All you have to worry about is follow me. Follow thou me. Verse 22. So this evening, could we just recognize that our duty is not to sort out who gets the biggest rewards and all the rest. By the way, I'll just throw this in extra, but I have a feeling that some of those that are out in the limelight, and nothing against them, but I have a feeling some of those that are out in the limelight and everything seems to be going great, they may not be the ones getting the greatest reward. Might have been a man who was faithful right back here in the, in the backside of the desert, so to speak. The one who never had any accolades, but just faithful, faithfully plotted on. This is what God called me to. I'm going to do my very best to be cheerful about it and see souls saved. That's just my opinion. But I, I wonder if maybe God doesn't have some special rewards for those who in, in the face of opposition, nobody else would have thought they were very successful, but God saw how faithful they were. And it may be that even what we thought was the great reward really wasn't as big as we thought it was. But God saw what was really happening behind the scenes. Maybe a missionary in far-flung places. Who knows? Who knows what the situation may be? But let's not obsess about somebody else's reward and just recognize it's just, it's just me and God. I have to just do what he wants me to do so that he is pleased. Well, one more. Maybe we could also say, don't obsess about their reverses. Don't obsess about their reverses. Yeah, there are some boundaries. There are some restraints. There are some rewards for some. Probably all of us to some extent, if we really, if we could see it as God sees it. But then once in a while, maybe we should just focus a little bit here on, on this issue, that we can get all bogged down in people's reverses. Now, you may not agree with this, and that's all right. But as I was thinking about this, and I guess I have for some time, I think that even though we're, we're living in a great day, there's, there's wonderful advantages, wonderful blessings. People all around the world can even uh, listen into the message. You have all these different things that are happening. And social media, yeah, that's part of it. And we're blessed in some ways. But you know, God told us that we have grace for our trials. But he didn't promise that we'd have grace for everybody else's trials. Now, I don't want to go too far here. I don't want to, I don't want to step out of bounds. But sometimes, maybe we need the caution right here that Jesus was saying to Peter, it doesn't matter what happens to him. You just follow me as faithfully as you know how. I know that's a loose paraphrase maybe, but that's the idea. You just follow me faithfully. I'll take care of him when he goes through his trial. I'll be with him. Obviously, Peter, Jesus didn't reveal it to Peter that John would be on the Isle of Patmos, but let's just take it that way. We know a little bit of the story. So it's not like Jesus is saying, now, Peter, well, let me back up. I'll try to say that a little more clearly. Jesus could have said, though he didn't reveal that to Peter, he could have said, now, Peter, I'm going to be with you on the cross. That's where you're headed. And I've got grace for you. And I will be with John on the Isle of Patmos. And when he finally comes to the point of death, I'll be with him then. Don't worry about that. I have the grace for it in the moment. But you know, I think sometimes there's a little bit of a challenge in our day because we know about everybody's problems all around the world. Now, I know that's a little overstated, but I think you understand what I'm saying. And it might be people far away from here, but you read the story maybe and you think, oh, my, that's awful. Lord, help them. And obviously, we're to bear one, another, one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. That's important. But maybe we should be careful about feeding our minds so full of things that we get on information overload. And we, we're always focused, oh, I wonder what the latest news is. And, and oh, did you know so-and-so had cancer? Wow, 
Isn't that awful? And I'm praying about that. Oh, so-and-so, oh my, that was awful. How tragic. And you go through all that. God didn't promise this grace for everybody else's trials. He promised to be with us in our time of need. And I don't want to take that too far because I know we need one another. That's part of the reason we meet together. But if our focus is so much on the virtual world out there, I mean, it's a real world for them, but in a sense, it's our only connection to them is virtually. Maybe he, Jesus might speak to us once in a while and say, you know what? I've got grace for them. But you're getting so overloaded with everything else going on that you miss the blessings I have for you in your real life right here. Don't get bogged down with their problem. Yes, pray about it. Be concerned for them. But leave it in my hands. What is that to thee? I'll have grace for you in your trial. I'll have grace for them in their trial. Pray for God to be with them, but let it in my hands. I, I hope you understand. This could, I know this could probably fall flat and maybe nobody would appreciate it. But oh God, help us. Sometimes we need to, to be careful not to obsess about the reverses that happen. And we're all concerned about, oh, did you hear what happened? Oh, what about John? Did you know he's going to be exiled? Did, oh, did you know Peter's going to be on the cross? Oh, what are we going to do? That's not the issue. The issue is that we trust God every step of the way. Sometimes it can be disheartening to hear what the future holds for different ones. And obviously that'd be the case here for Peter. If they would have known about John, it probably would have been disheartening for them too. But let's be careful we don't just make bad news our business. And we're always looking for more. And always dwelling on it. Getting distracted from our own personal walk with God and what He requires of us and having the grace in the moment when He calls us to discipleship and what it means to follow Him. Don't obsess about reverses. And so in conclusion tonight, your job and mine is to love and follow God without hesitation. No, we don't know what all is going to happen. We may not know about all the, all the circumstances of life and thankfully we don't. I don't think I'd want to know. I wouldn't want to know all the things that I would have to face. But in the moment, God will have grace. In the moment, God can be with us. He will be with us. And sometimes maybe that means that we have to just be, be satisfied to leave some things outside of our business. I don't have to know about that. That's not my business. Some people can really be nosy. And they're always wanting to know something more. And sometimes maybe they think they know more than they really know. And, you know, on and on. <laughs> That's not really the whole part of the message tonight. I'm just touching on that. But this whole issue, what is that to thee? Maybe it ought to get impressed a little firm, more firmly in our minds. Maybe the question for meditation in our own minds. Before we get our mind and our mouth engaged about the next problem. Oh, did you hear about this? Oh, it's just terrible. Oh, oh it's awful. I know, that's, that's the reverse side. But there are other parts. Did you know so-and-so can, you know, they say they're a Christian, they're doing this or that. And their boundary is not the same as yours. Or maybe, hey, did you know how they got so popular and, and how God used them in such a way? Wow. Over and over, we can get this Facebook mentality that says, oh, I'm comparing myself with somebody else. And that's not what it's about. It's about comparing ourselves to Jesus. Am I following him with all of my heart? Am I letting God work in my life and in the lives of those that I'm looking on and observing? God help us when he says, what is that to thee? Just follow thou me. Are we willing to do just that? God help us to keep our eyes on him and a little less on others.